guys, today I'm going to be doing a bookshelf tour. I've given this some thought because my bookshelf isn't how I want it to be, but I'm going to be moving soon and who knows when the next time I'm going to have an actually organized bookshelf will be, so I figured I'd just give it a go. Before I get started, I do want to say that this isn't where I normally film, and that's because I have two bookcases in my bedroom. I do this weird thing that I've never seen anyone else do, where one of my bookcases is for the books I've read, and the second bookcase down over there is solely for books that I haven't read. Now, I've definitely read a lot more books than this, but I just couldn't fit a third bookshelf into my bedroom. <laughs> so I'm not going to be going over the bookshelf that I typically stand in front of because that's my TBR bookshelf, and it's a mess. There's no organization, things are shoved wherever they were fit. On here, I did have a sense of organization that I was going for in the beginning at least. As time has gone on, it's gotten progressively messier because I haven't been able to stick to like what the theme of each shelf was. I've just needed to get books on here. And I've also completely run out of room, so the rest of my books are just stored in piles all over my bedroom, which is great. But yeah, regardless, long story short, today I'm just going to be going over this bookcase. This is such a funny crop on my face. Anyway, okay, so first off is the top shelf. This was meant to be just my general fiction shelf. Um, it has a couple other stuff thrown in now, I think. Also, I apologize that the framing's kind of off. Over here, we have my Stephen King. Starting at the top, I have Dr. Sleep, Sleeping Beauties, Desperation, and Misery. This little corner over here is just kind of where the hardback Stephen King goes. Then I just have some other general fiction over here, starting with Little Light by Hanya Yanagihara, The Library of Mount Char by Scott Hawkins, Cersei by Bellon Miller, and then finally, <laughs> Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. Then in the upper middle part over here, I just have, again, some random fiction. Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead. The Kite Runner by Kalo Toseni. Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. A Clockwork Arn by Anthony Burgess. The Middle Sex by Jeffrey Eugenides. I definitely said that name wrong. We're just gonna keep going. Down here, the first book I have is The Ocean at the End of the Lane by Neil Gaiman. Then The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng. IQ84 by Haruki Murakami. <laughs> I don't know why this one's like falling. The Sudden Appearance of Hope by Claire North. This one's just a random nonfiction that was thrown in here because I didn't have any other room. This is We Still Here, Pandemic, Policing, Protest, and Possibility by Mark Lamont Hill. Then I have The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Sutterfield. Another book that's in the wrong shelf, technically. <laughs> I have Jane Austen's Emma, My Cousin Rachel by Daphne du Maurier, another classic, I've got Lord of the Flies by William Golding. This book's kind of random, which is why I'm hiding the name. Um, this is a random book that like an old man who worked at my mom's job gave to him and he wrote it after his wife died, which is just the sweetest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Another nonfiction, Decolonizing Extinction, The Work of Care and Orangutan Rehabilitation by Gino Salazar Perinus. Then over here are just some mass market paperbacks. Odd Thomas by Dean Koontz. This is one that me and my dad really loved when I was younger. Alive by Piers Paul Reed. This is the stories of a bunch of people who crashed into the Andes and then like ate the dead people. My dad gave this to me when I was way too young. I'm gonna say that. And then we're just getting into the Stephen King. First is The Girl Who Loved Tom Corden, The Shining, Carrie, The Stand, The Tommyknockers, Pet Cemetery, and this book is it. My sister tore off the cover and she never got me anyone. Out of all the books on the shelf, my favorite is probably Decolonizing Extinction. I had to read this for a primatology class, but it's actually so interesting. It follows an orangutan rehabilitation center and the author is an anthropologist, so she's kind of doing an ethnography of the place. And she talks a lot about our relationship to these animals and kind of the harm we're doing by trying to save the species from extinction and how our relationship with extinction and the other animals on this planet could change for the better. So good, so interesting, I highly recommend. Next up we have my high fantasy shelf, or just fantasy. I know there's glare on it, but I can't figure out how to get rid of it, so we're just gonna go with it. <laughs> The first book we have here is a random Stephen King that I just kind of shoved in because I ran out of room. 112263. Then we have The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, which isn't really high fantasy. This is just another one I had to shove in. Warbreaker by Brandon Sanderson. You're going to notice a lot of Brandon Sanderson on this shelf. Then we have the Lightbringer series, the first of which is The Black Prism by Brent Weeks. The Blinding Knife, The Broken Eye, and then I have... The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss, The Wise Man's Fear, also by Patrick Rothfuss, 
And then underneath all of that, I have, oh, all that fell. I have A Night of the Seven Kingdoms by George R.R. Martin. Then over here, the first one I have is Every Heart a Doorway by Sheena McGuire. Another George R.R. Martin one, this is The Ice Dragon, which is illustrated and it's kind of like a child story. It's so cool though. Then The Man in the Castle by Philip K. Dick. This is technically sci-fi, but I don't read enough sci-fi to like separate it from the fantasy. Right here hiding, we've got another Brandon Sanderson, The Alloy of Law. Then I have the Wheel of Time series, starting with The Eye of the World, The Dragon Reborn. Sorry, I'm trying to hold these in a way that the sun doesn't shine on them. <laughs> and The Shadow Rising, that's as far as I've gotten in that series so far. Then I have a box set series of um, the Mistborn trilogy. And then I have Atlantis, which was Brandon Sanderson's debut novel. And then right over here, I've got The Slow Regard of Silent Things. This is actually a companion to the Name of the Wind series. Really annoys me that it's not with them though, so I'm gonna put it over here, I think. Better. <laughs> over here, the first one on top that I have is The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. Words of Radiance. This is also part of the Stormlight Archive. And then Oathbringer. I have not been able to fit the fourth book on this shelf. <laughs> That's not gonna happen until I get more shelves. And then the last book, which is squeezed in over here, is The Rhythmatist by Brandon Sanderson. I think on the shelf, my favorite and like the winner in my mind, because I'm just making it a competition now, is definitely Brandon Sanderson. He just wins, that's all. Then we move on to the third shelf. This shelf was meant to be kind of classics and nonfiction. Um, it has some literary fiction, just some random stuff honestly shoved into here. So first off, we have some nonfiction. This is Evicted by Matthew Desmond. A random classic. This is David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. You'll notice this one, it's honestly just kind of a big mess. <laughs> Things are just kind of put wherever they can fit, especially for this one and then the next two down. Another nonfiction, Eating Animals by Jonathan Safran Foer. Foer? Four? Four. I don't know. 1984. Bad Feminist, a collection of essays by Roxane Gay. Stiff, The Curious Life of Human Cadavers by Mary Roach. So You've Been Publicly Shamed by John Ronson. American Hookup, The New Culture of Sex on Campus by Lisa Wade. This one's really interesting. A book that my dad got me when I was really into Hamilton. This is Revolutionary Mothers, Woman in the Struggle for America's Independence by Kara Bergeron. Then I have two Primo Levi books. The first is Moments of Reprieve, which is essays, and The Drowned and the Saved, which is also essays. Right here I have three just like shoved in, but they're falling, so we're going to show them now. Abraham Lincoln's The Gettysburg Address and other writings. This is a funny one. I really like The Gettysburg Address. I think it's so well written. The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chops Chobosky. I almost call him Chomsky. That's not his name. And I have The Yellow Wallpaper and Other Stories by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. Continuing on with over here, I've got The Complete Persepolis by Marjan Satrapi. Voices from Chernobyl, The Oral History of a Nuclear Disaster by Svetlana Alexievich. I got this massive beast, Alexander Hamilton by Ron Chernow. This is actually my dad's book, but I read this whole thing, which I think is insane because it's a mammoth. And I've left my Hamilton face, but I'm leaving it here. Up here, I've got a bunch of nonfiction. The Wretched of the Earth by Franz Fanon. Chomsky's Prophet Over People, and Neoliberalism and the Global Order. Writings of Eugene V. Debs, a collection of essays by America's Most Famous Socialist. Uncivil Agreement, How Politics Became Our Identity by Liliana Mason. Another Roxanne Gay, This Is Not That Bad, Dispatches from Rape Culture. Going Clear, Scientology, Hollywood, and the Prison of Belief by Lawrence Wright. Terror in the Mind of God, The Global Rise of Religious Violence by Mark Jurgensmeyer. This is really just me realizing that I don't know how to pronounce the name of the authors for most of these books. Here I have my beloved Penguin Clothbound Edition collection. That's also one shoved up here. It starts with Anna Karenina and then it moves into some Austin. We've got Sense and Sensibility, Persuasion, and Pride and Prejudice. It's actually funny because my favorite Austin book is Emma, but I don't have it in this pretty edition. And then one of my favorite books, Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. Oh, and then right here I have another nonfiction. This is The Romanoff Sisters by Helen Rapport. Over here we've got kind of a mixed bag. This is a place that I had a lot of room left after I had tried to organize them, so a lot of random stuff got shoved here. First we have nonfiction, Feminist City, Claiming Space in a Man-Made World by Leslie Kern. Then another one of my favorite editions of book, The Cloth Found. This is a picture of Dorian Gray. Um, I have Lolita, two Shakespeare books, I Have Much Ado About Nothing, and Macbeth. Then we move into some Margaret Atwood, starting with The, Hands <laughs> the Handmaid's Tale, Lady Oracle, Cat's Eye, Alias Grace. Then I have 
Shirley Jackson, we have always lived in the castle, moves into the Elena Ferrante section. <laughs> this is the My Brilliant Friend series of the Neapolitan novels, that's what the series is called. This is book one, My Brilliant Friend, Story of a New Name, Those Who Leave and Those Who Stay, and The Story of the Lost Child. The very last book I have here is really cool. It's the American Fraternity, this is a photo book. It's so cool. I love this thing. And it goes on to talk about how, like, it shows you all these pictures of these frat dudes doing just stupid shit and looking dumb, because they are. And then at the end of the book, it has a whole list of everyone who's ever been involved in government who's also part of a fraternity, which is kind of funny. But I love this. I think it's so cool. On this shelf, I can't name a favorite. If I had to name, like, top four, it would be The Wretched of the Earth, Jane Eyre, Fronte, and American Fraternity, because I think that book's so cool. Okay, it is many hours later, so I'm sorry if the lighting has changed, but I just wanted to keep going with this. Now, this shelf is supposed to be, like, a general fantasy, um, mainly YA fantasy shelf, and mainly it is, but it's still kind of crazy in some places. So first off, we have the Strange the Dreamer duology by Lainey Taylor, consisting of Strange the Dreamer and Muse of Nightmares. Then there's the Shades of Magic series by V.E. Schwab, which is A Darker Shade of Magic, A Gathering of Shadows, and A Conjuring of Light. Then I have the Infernal Devices series by Cassandra Clare, so the first one is Clockwork Angel, Clockwork Prince, and then Clockwork Princess. Next is Octavia Butler's Kindred, then Life After Life by Kate Atkinson, then I have this random mythology book by Edith Hamilton, and then lastly what is called the Winter Night series I think, so that's The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden, The Girl in the Tower, and The Winter of the Witch. Now up here is where it especially gets a little bit messy because I had room to just kind of shove stuff up here. So at the very top is Parable of the Sower by Octavia Butler. Then I have Inside This Place, Not Of It, Narratives from Women's Prisons, Social Movements, The Structure of Collective Mobilization. This is one that I just needed for my thesis by Paul Almeida. Climate Crisis and the Global Green New Deal by Noam Chomsky and Robert Paulin. And then this isn't a nonfiction. This is just another random YA shoved in here. The Arsonist by Stephanie Oak. Oaks. Then on this side, the first book is Exit West by Malshan Hamid. Then I have The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. Seed to Harvest by Octavia E. Butler. This is like a bind up of a bunch of different novels that are in one series. Um, the different novels are Wild Seed, Mind of My Mind, Clay's Ark, and Pattern Master. And then a random nonfiction. This is Vol Revolting Prostitutes, The Fight for Sex Workers' Rights by Molly Smith and Juno Mack. Right here are some random mass markets, honestly. <laughs> the Versus to Kill a Marking Bird by Harper Lee. The Daughter of the Forest by Juliette Morillier. This is my favorite book. This is a nonfiction. Anne Frank, The Diary of a Young Girl. The Lies of Lac Lamora by Scott Lynch. Then I have just the first two books of Outlander because... I read the whole series, but I only really liked the first two, so I have Outlander and Dragonfly and Amber. Then this is a random short story collection. Um, they were like Family to Me by Helen Marles Shankman. And then I have the Seven Realms series by Cinder Williams Chima versus the Dragon King. I mean, the Demon King, not the Dragon King. <laughs> the Exile Queen, the Grey Wolf Throne, and the Crimson Crown. My favorite on this shelf, again, as I've pretty much already said, is Daughter of the Forest by Juliette Morillier. Okay, and then down here is my bottom shelf, obviously. These are some random books. You can kind of see them out of frame. These are probably ones that I'm getting rid of. And then over there, which you can kind of see in the corner, are just some random um, paintings that I haven't finished yet, so don't look at those. But down here was meant to be my YA shelf, but then I just ended up keeping more, so they ended up spilling onto the second shelf. But over here on this side, the first book we have is The Library of Fates by Aditi Karana. Then there's Vicious by V.E. Schwab. I don't actually think it's a YA, but it's down here anyway. Codename Verity by Elizabeth Wine, The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. Then all of these are the Thief series, I guess. I don't know what the official name for it is. But there's The Thief. These are all by Megan Wallen Turner. The Queen of Atolia, The King of Atolia, and Conspiracy of Kings. Then I have my um, Lightning Thief series, which is the original one that I read when I was like 10. So you've got The Lightning Thief. I'm realizing now that the series is Percy Jackson and the Olympians, but whatever. Book two, The Sea of Monsters, The Titan's Curse, The Battle of the Labyrinth, and The Last Olympian, all by Rick Riordan, obviously. Then the first book up here is Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. I know this, like, isn't a good book, but I have very warm feelings towards it, so I'm gonna keep it forever. Then over here, the first book I have is 
Uprooted by Naomi Novik. Then I have the Six of Crows series, Six of Crows, <laughs> and Crooked Kingdom. Then I have the Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. This is something that I still really want to read. Well, I mean, the second of. I've already read this one, obviously. It's on my red shelf. Then I have A Crown of Wishes by Roshini Chokshi. And A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Moss. I did have the first and third and fourth. Um, of this series, but I got rid of all of them but this one because <laughs> this is the only one that I really like had any good feelings towards. Then up here, the first book, which is Hiding, is Vengeful by V.E. Schwab, and then it's kind of a funny story by Ned Vizzini. Then these three are the Dark Artifices series by Cassandra Clare, the first of which is Lady Midnight, then you got Lord of Shadows, and Queen of Air and Darkness. And this one's actually a recent read. This is The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. Really like this one. And then the last book that's hiding back here <laughs> is Hamilton the Revolution. <laughs> I'm a little embarrassed that I have this, but I can't get rid of it because I did really love Hamilton at the time. So there you have it guys. That is my bookshelf tour, at least one of them. I do have other books around here, but they're just so messy that I don't want to show anyone. So. That's all for today, and I'll see you soon with another video. Goodbye!